Okay, welcome to this episode of the Athletic Fitness and Nutrition Podcast. My name is Paul Burgess, and I'm here today with a good friend of ours who supports the show um, on a regular basis because he's this is third, a, third time. appearance, which is uh, which is always good. But for some reason, I don't remember doing it this late before. I think previously you were you were you were less of a valuable commodity potentially in podcast world <laughs> and now that you've got a bit of status you're you're getting up at a more sensible hour in australia so i'm having to stay up late in the uk but marty gendall okay. welcome to the show mate yeah, thanks dude it's uh <laughs> it's quarter past six over here so sorry you have to keep you up so late i'm i'm <laughs> stuffed i'm such an early early to bed early to rise guys so I'm, thank I'm you i'm pretty sure our first one it was like 4 30 a.m for you or something like that <laughs> um so, whilst um, we are very happy to have you back, we're going to do something a little bit different today. And I want um, I want to try and get the best way possible for listeners and viewers to get this. So, Marty is going to start talking about some development they've been doing with an online um, platform. And some of it is going to be visual. Now, if you're sitting in your car listening to this, you're going to be thinking, okay, well, how am I going to do that? Um, so we're going to try and explain it as well as possible. It's probably going to be a bit difficult, but bear with us. So we're going to try and explain it as good as we can. And um, worst comes to the worst, you can watch the video on YouTube and um, see it on there. Uh, and also you can just go and check out the actual platform. Um, but we're going to do our best to describe it. So anyway, Marty. You, for people you who don't, it up, mate. Yeah, for, great. for people who don't know who you are, before you completely ruin our show and make it a visual show on radio, which just <laughs> has never been done before for good reason. Um, <laughs> We're innovators for yeah, yeah. We're cutting edge. Tell us about <laughs> tell us about uh, your whole background and oh wow, uh, where we're at it now. Started a long time ago, about forty two years ago. Um, Anyway, um, wife type one, got interested in nutrition, last three or four years been digging down, basically trying to systematize optimal nutrition and um, for the last 18 months or so, trying to develop this platform to uh, to help people find exactly what they need out of nutrition to get them where they want to go. So um, yeah, designing different tools that just get people exactly where they want to go without fluffing around with whole different options and confusing things and yeah yeah absolutely and and you've got a great website called optimizing nutrition and you're mm. very prolific across facebook for sure yep and and various other too uh, much time online like all of us sorry too much time online like all of us yeah spending too much time uh, doing unnecessary stuff and not any of the good stuff but which is not true at all and your posts and blogs are by far and away the most detailed probably that are out there I would have thought um, and so every time I see it come up I, one part of me says oh for god's sake it means I've got to read all this again <laughs> and the other part of me says come on let's read it because I know it's going to be good so <laughs> so um, uh, but yeah it, it's some really good stuff that you brought out over the last few years and I know that Thanks, man. when you first sort of appeared I contacted you and went oh mate come on the show and um and you said, oh, what, 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 what am I even saying that's interesting? And I went, mate, are you crazy? Like, people have been looking for this for so long. Someone to, to dissect it, basically, and say, look, this means this, yeah. that means that, and, and that's why these things need to be done. And, mm. and there's a group of you engineer guys, because you're an engineer by mm. trade in your day job. Mm. Um, mm. I think Ted Nyman was one. Um, mm. Uh, Kian Foley had a, had a yeah. background in it. Ivor, Dave Feldman. Yeah. Um, Brian, Sa Brian Saunders. Yeah, was yeah. A, I think he's got an engineering background. Yeah, he come from a little bit of engineering in IT and film. Mm. And um, so he was on recently, actually. Oh, really? And, um, That's great. Talking about his new film. Are you aware? You, do you know about that? Mm. Yeah, I had a chat to him the other day, so yeah. he's yeah, he's a lot of fun. Great yeah. guy. That's right, hey, that's right, you were on that one as well. <laughs> um so we were having before before we started, I was saying that every time I open my PC, Marty comes up on another podcast. Um so all these engineers have kind of taken over the nutrition space and gone, look, we can do this much better than you nutritionists can. <laughs> Move and, aside. Um, yeah, we can make sense of this. Um 
and you've done it in a really good way honestly mate and i rave about this everywhere because and you, you've been mentioned many times on the podcast as you well know because you apparently listen to them occasionally and <laughs> it, it's it is a serious thing that you guys have really brought some sim- simplicity and understanding mm. to the whole thing about nutrition which is mm. quite possibly one of the most complicated and confusing areas that we ever look at right you, definitely if you're not vegan then you, you you are clearly going to die early of some terrible disease. And then the next person goes, well, unless you eat just meat, then clearly yeah. you're going to die early of some terrible disease. And the other person says, you have to eat only dairy, or you have to eat only fish, or you have to... And it's like, really? I mean, which one is, is, is the reality? And that's kind of what Brian's done with his film, to try yeah. and give people some sort of understanding of stuff. But the issue is we've got media that's very powerful and with a bit of money behind it, that's really trying to mm. push its own agenda, um, mm. especially like farmers and dairy and things like that who, you know, you, the, the vegan um, movement, and there's nothing wrong with being a vegan if that's what you choose. I have no issue with personal preference. People mm. don't come to me and say, what's your personal preference for, for a diet? Mm. People come to me and say, I'm sick. Can you put, try and fix me? But if mm. someone wants to be a vegan, that's up to them. But, you know, there was a big uh, film on, on Netflix that had a lot of momentum behind it and was massively widespread. Um, mm. but, but it's very powerful, is the media. People believe what mm. they read, never mind where they mm. read it or where they see it. So you kind of break it down to its factual parts and just go, look, mm. this is something that is a fact and take it as you please. So, yeah. as I remember, maybe about a year ago now, you stumbled across some data in my fitness pal. Yeah. How did you get hold I of did. that? Oh, did you just, like, um, hack it or something and just got no, all no, the data no, out? No. <laughs> Do you have my credit card details? <laughs> yeah, no, totally. No, no, not at all. Um, yeah, these guys just published this big, massive data set of half a million days of my fitness pal data. So... I, I think what they did, it, a lot of people publish their stuff online and they, uh, they they share it anonymously and then these guys can just mach- use a machine learning algorithm to scrape it and dump it into a big database and publish it mm. on ResearchGate. So yeah, my nutrient optimizer partner found it and downloaded it and it, it is a massive database so he needed to use Python and a bunch of analysis tools to actually extract the information out of it to the point that I could play with it in a spreadsheet and we just kept on workshopping it to try and say hey what what can this tell us about our food because I suppose that's what as engineers we try to do uh, is is say you know if you push this here what moves and for me it's been like okay my wife with type 1 diabetes how do we stabilize the blood sugars and what do we have to do to make better food choices and food timing choices to help her stabilize the blood sugars and that that just improves the quality of life so it's, yeah. it's worth the time to invest to understand and implement that so um yeah and th- this is the same sort of thing going from um the insulin index to nutrient density then this helps us build an understanding of satiety which is which is really cool so yeah. really exciting stuff so tell me something with, with my fitness pal the users get to put in their own data right yep and um they also are able to edit existing data on there or they can put their own food description and calories yeah, and content yeah, on there. So yeah. some of it could be seen as being inaccurate. And, yeah, totally. Um, sorry. And, 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 um, and so this is a question some people have asked me when, they've, when I've spoken about it, when I've been pr- seeing yeah. your praises. So they go, look, if you can put your own stuff in, firstly, you might not be putting the right amounts in. Yep. And it might be the wrong sort of data uh, that you're adding the calories to. Um, so this is my answer, and I'm happy for you to correct me on this, is that the, the fact of the matter is when you've got so much of the data, you can see the mm. trend. Yeah. And therefore, it's the trend that shows you the, the information rather than the specific calories Etc. Am, am I right in exactly, that? Exactly. Exactly. We don't need precision exactly to get the trend. And when you've got half a million days of data, um, you can deduce trends about you know what is it about your food that helps you to eat more and less, more or less. 
And like from a from a micronutrient point of view, we strongly prefer chronometer because it has it just says oh, we're going to use the USDA database, which has got all the right data. And if they take user enter data, they screen it and analyze it themselves to make sure that anything they yeah. include in the database is really rigorously tested and has a good basis for it. But um, the MyFitnessPal stuff has got fairly accurate macronutrients. Um, and then they've got salt, potassium, a few other things, but we haven't used other than sodium, which is another post looking at, which is really interesting to see where the relationship between satiety and sodium intake is really fascinating, which is something we've got coming out in a little while. But um, other than that, we just look at it from a macronutrient perspective to say which, how do you manipulate your macronutrients to eat less more easily and it, and it, mm. but the thing is it aligns really nicely with the university of sydney data that um they did back in 1990 which was a laboratory sort of data setting and exactly with what um kian was talking about on your podcast recently that i love his stuff and i love his philosophy just and and what it showed really clearly is it's that combination of fat and carbs together that we just go nuts for when mm. it's like we're preparing for winter we get this gorge instinct this hyperphagia that you know you've you've had the brownie you've had the chips and then you go searching for the popcorn and the coke yeah. and everything else and your appetite just doesn't switch off but when you get out of that middle zone um as if it was summer or winter a more extreme environment um, or, or a more natural environment that happens in nature rather than this manufactured food environment, we um, we just eat enough but not too much. Yeah, but one of the biggest issues people have is they overeat constantly mm. and they feel as though it's, well, I'm just always hungry. I'm hungry, I've yeah, eaten lots I, of food, but I still want to eat something. And I don't think it's their fault. No, 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 not at I, all. But that's the thing that you just you eat when you're hungry and as matter as much as you go on a track with my phone you end up eating with, when you're hungry and you get bored of eating when you're not hungry so you know but, you want to hack that you want to understand it to make better food choices but i think you only uh, you only stop eating when you've had enough when the food is whole foods and it's mm. you know exactly the right type exactly. of food you can get yeah. through an awful lot of junk food and, and feel really like distended in your gut in other words you know yeah. physically feel your your stomach is full and yet you're yeah. still having that next mouthful of whatever it is um, yeah. and you see it a lot in in restaurants where the people are drinking with their food and that yeah. pushes down blood sugar and you have all sorts of issues with that and that's why that's why they give you white bread as a starter right as, on yeah. the table yeah. before you before you uh, order to, to get your blood sugar up and down and make you hungrier and, and stuff so it's a really yeah. you know like you say it's it's not the people who are at fault necessarily mm. it's the environment that we've been that we've so cleverly created around us so that we never have to starve which yeah. was the, which, which is a good thing but mm. we've gone so far the other way that we're not only not starving we're we're overeating to the point of type 2 diabetes and Cardiovascular totally. risk. Yeah, the more more I've dug into this recently, the more I've understood that it's we trick ourselves, we tell ourselves things that we go, oh, I really like that, I like doing this or that, or, I like eating at night, or I don't like eating too much protein, or I, you know, fat bombs are fantastic. We trick ourselves into doing these things that optimize for maximum calorie intake and maximum fat storage. And it's by reverse engineering it and looking at the data, you can go, okay, well, our, our subconscious is really, really smart. It, it's optimized for su survival. And we can reverse engineer that to say, okay, how do we consciously make better food choices so our gorge in instincts are subdued and controlled and we're not captive to that, so, yeah. So once you've uh, flicked through half a million sets of data what was the what was the the, the the end result that you found most interesting because i know there's a lot of stuff that came out of that <laughs> you know. yeah well, we've, we've mined it and just kept on making a bunch of posts mm. to unpack it like um looking at you know when you should eat and that tends to be like breakfast and lunch helps you to eat less 
Um, eating more protein for breakfast helps you to eat less. And there's all these things you probably heard about before and the data just confirms it. Um, the most fascinating thing for me was when I looked at the starch plus fat and the appetite response to that. So what we did to understand appetite and or satiety is basically looked at the your goal intake for the day and whether you reach that, whether you overshot or undershot. And we could tell whether basically did you eat more than you want to or less than you want to. So that helps us to understand satiety. And, and if you were eating a diet that had minimal starch and fat combination, you found it easy to under eat or achieve your goal quite easily. Yeah. But it was, you know, it's those chips and lasagna and Oreos and Ritz crackers and all those sort of things that if you're trying to um, track calories and keep within a certain calorie amount, you're going to just gorge and binge and you're not going to be able to meet it. And people say, yeah, I can, you know, as people say that they they met their calorie target or they lost weight on a, on a Twinkie diet or the McDonald's diet or those sorts of things. But that's going to take incredible willpower mm -hmm. and you're going to, as soon as they finish that little stint, that stunt for a month or whatever, they're just going to go, <laughs> just give me unlimited food. Yeah. Um, but you need to find a way that you can manage your diet over a long, longer period that you're not always fighting willpower. This is, this is one of the issues I had with if it fits your macros. And the principle, I believe, works, right? You can do, if it fits your macros, if the food you're eating is whole foods. Yep. So in my mind, that would then mean that you've got a, a dietary plan that allows you to eat different foods every day, so long as mm. it fits within the macros that you're trying to follow, right? So if it fits your mm. macros, you can do it. So you don't need to eat the same foods day in, day out, because they're measured and you know what it is, you've got more mm. flexibility. That's fine. The problem is when people sit there and go, you can eat donuts and ice cream and stuff so long as it fits your macros. Because mm. if you eat, I don't know, half a pizza, the rest of the day you're going to be eating white fish and that's it yeah. if you're going to try and make that fit in any sort of yeah. normal sort of numbers. And, and yeah. So that's my first problem. And the second problem is if someone is is following that type of approach where they they use this flexible eating that allows them to eat junk or highly processed foods or whatever else it is, if they've eaten everything in the day that's accounted for their calories and macros and they mm. have got left 250 calories of mm. um, high carbohydrate, high fat. They've worked it so they can have that chocolate bar, whatever it is, right? Yep. They eat the chocolate bar going, right, it fits my macros, that's cool. But that often isn't the last thing they eat. Because yeah, that, totally. that totally. sends them off now into, oh, now I'm hungry. And that's my personal experience is once you go, yeah, there's the free brownie or the cookie on at the at work. Once you do that, once you start taking that in, it's it's like um, uh, Kian talked about. It's the, the that gorge instinct that kicks in in your body. You say, yeah. well, it must be winter. It must be autumn. Winter's coming. Where's my food? I'm going to need to prepare for winter. And you yeah. just your appetite kicks in and it's nine o'clock at night and you're still chowing down the food and that one last thing you were going to have to round out your day was <laughs> three hours ago. Yeah, it was the beginning of quite a big gorge. intake of calories. And again, yeah. that stuff that you're that you're deciding to eat now isn't chicken salad, right? Yeah. It's going to be more stuff which is high in fat, high in carbohydrate potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just really important that we get this message that if you can separate your fats and carbs throughout your meals, mm. you, you've got more chance of it being controllable. Yeah, totally. Um, did, did you find out how many calories the average person was eating on that database? Ah, oh, I couldn't. Uh, like we, we looked at people who are eating between 
whose target was between 1,000 and 2,500, but I don't remember exactly how many calories we were. But it was definitely, we, we tried to look at people who were intentionally trying to limit their calorie intake rather than the, the power lifters who were trying to gain. So we tried to exclude those people from the data. But, um, yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, I think in the States, the average has gone up to about 2,800, 2,900. Mm. Whereas 20 years ago, it was 2,300 or something like that. Mm. And mm. we can see why, you know, people are getting fatter. Yeah. So certainly getting heavier. Um, yeah. Because calorie intake is going up. Um, yeah. And it kind of fits what you're saying calorie intake's gone up because the foods that you've got available to you now um, are increasing your appetite to eat more of those foods which is fantastic for a food manufacturer yeah. or or or, or a sort yeah, totally. of man, manufacturer of you know oreos or whatever it is but from, <laughs> from a health perspective you know both here in the uk and in the states i'm not sure about uh, in australia but certainly here and in the states the the medical um burden the cost is becoming prohibitive. They reckon in the yeah. States, diabetes is going to bankrupt them. <clears throat> yeah, totally. Its, it's going to bankrupt all of Western world yeah. eventually, but and not that far away. Um, I'll just quickly show you some... We'll try our, share, our screen share. Okay. Um, if, if we try this... Uh, can you see the right thing there? No? Yeah. Yeah, so if you look Great. at that, that's the, the, the US macronutrient profile in percentage over the last hundred years so the carbs have come down as a percentage and fat has gone up to the point where they're quite similar hmm. um, so we, we as we've got more and more ability to process food they've come together and we just enjoy that sort of macro split and if you look at like carbs have dropped and then come back up to where they were about 100 years ago fat with all the refined vegetable oil sort of continued to, to churn up but when you look at total calories, which is the purple line, that's just gone up with the combination of fat and carbs together, along with their ob ob obesity, which is um, yeah massive. And the same things happened in China. Their carbs have gone down, their fats gone gone up, and their obesity has gone up together. So it's it's um, pretty powerful information to look at a number of different aspects that all sort of align together. It's just a proven story. It just it is what it is. And yeah. it's ruined some, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people's lives on the back of it. And, yeah. and, and you can say, yeah, it's my fitness pal data, that's garbage, but it aligns with so many different avenues yeah. and just common wisdom that you know. So it's just like, oh, wow, the, the my fitness pal analysis just gives us a more refined um, understanding and precision with it. And you can say, yeah, it's hypothesis generation. You should test it in a laboratory, but it's like, this is 1,600 person years of data. Mm. So to get 1,600 people in a laboratory in a metabolic ward for a year, it's going to cost a bit of money. So I don't know when that, when that re results is going to come out or who's going to pay for that. But you know what? Probably not but, the food companies. Yeah, but people are too fixated on, show me the research, show me the, this, show me that. I heard somebody comment on Joe Rogan's show the other day with Chris Cresser and mm. Joel. That was great. Joel, Joel Kahn. Kahn. And they said, well, I've, I still haven't heard of an argument to eat meat. Um, even though Chris has said all this stuff, Chris is not a doctor, so it's probably not worth listening to him. <laughs> and, and Joel's all, a doctor. Huh? Joel's a doctor, yeah. And, and Joel's all, a doctor. So. almost went back and went, you know what, if you're relying on doctors to give you the best advice, you know, uh, we've, got to, we've got to have a proper sit down and a chat. But the... And nothing wrong with doctors, by the way, before You then get... need to look at where the doctors are getting their nutritional education That's from it. and yeah, who's when... driving the agenda behind that. That's yeah, a fascinating I mean, rabbit hole as well. When it comes to that, I've got nothing against doctors, don't get me wrong, but the, you know, you, I don't think it's necessary to give me a peer-reviewed, randomised controlled trial about this stuff when you can look down the street and see, you know, eight-year-olds with diabetes. Mm. It's, it, it, it's messed up. So mm. It, it, mm. It, don't be waiting for the study. Let's just do something about it now. And and that brings mm. me on to something that you personally, and you didn't do any uh, research on this. You decided just to observe, right? So you went to, you went on a holiday recently to a very nice island. Oh, yeah. Right? And um, saw, 
Well, you can tell the story far better than I can because you were there. And I've only been telling you your own story. But yeah, so yeah. go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to Vanuatu, fantastic country. We went there five years ago for a holiday, and it's a really nice, relaxing place. And it's this all these volcanoes have formed islands, so the the food that's growing there is just incredibly nutrient dense, and the people who are living off it look fantastic. But um, we tried to go to the markets and went there a couple of times, and basically these people are bringing their produce from the land and they're, they're, they're finding it harder and harder to get land because the Chinese and the, the Westerners are buying it up. They come to the markets, they sell their great nutrient-rich produce and then go next door and buy the Oreos and all the vegetable oil and flour, which is so much less expensive. Like you buy the um, the poor poor for 200 vatu and then the Oreo bag is, is 20 vatu and you just go... We're pricing these people out of health. It's such a, a fundamental ethical issue. And you can see the Chinese are being very, very strategic in buying up the land, in investing in roads, in giving the, the Vanuatu government these massive loans that in, they're already defaulting on. So they're building all these schools and roads and government buildings. And you can see in 10, 20 years' time that it's the Chinese probably who are going to have control over Vanuatu because they can see that that's where the food is to feed the whole nation of China and their economy is booming. And, um, yeah, it's just a, a magnified, accelerated version of what's happening in the rest of the world where these people who look fantastic, the same people, same race who haven't, like Western Aid Price talks, you used to hear people talk about Western Aid Price, it's like the same population given a different environment, different food, look completely different. And I think these people are even more vulnerable to it because if you've been able to get to an island in a canoe to settle that island from another land, you probably might have been a little bit bigger and able to store fat when you left the home country. So these people are probably more predisposed to just getting really, really big really, really fast as soon as they get these hyperpalatable foods that they can't switch off from. So it's just... It's criminal, it's unethical, and it's really frustrating. And But at the same time, everybody else in the world is doing the same thing and following down the same path that we're all eating what's effectively fossil fuels tipped into the ground with minimal nutrients coming out as refined flour and refined oil that gets reconstituted, coloured, flavoured, maybe a few, you know, token supplemental nutrients thrown in and remarketed back in the supermarket. And if you look at everything that's in those supermarket aisles, it's that combination of um, refined fat and refined starch that is really cheap, massive profit margin. And once you start, once you start, you just can't stop. So yeah, it's, it's scary times. And, and the fact that they can't afford really to farm their own land with enough food to f feed themselves and they'd rather yeah. go and buy the cheaper stuff so they can feed the family and everything else is yeah. really quite scary, right? Because the only people buying their food now are the tourists that go over there and going, oh, this yeah. is amazing. I wish we, we, I wish we had this at home. And, and yet <laughs> yeah. the guys have got it in their home, but they can't eat it because they can't afford even their own stuff. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I heard you speaking about the difference in some of the population where they hadn't started eating that kind of food there. Yeah. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the jawline and the teeth and, everything else they look amazing different. yeah there's these guys that there's some because tourism has come to vanuatu there's these they can afford to have these little reserves where they have people who replicate how they lived 50 years ago and they they're out there you know husking the coconuts and probably eating more of the same sort of foods that they did 100 years ago and 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 doing those same sort of practices and they look fantastic because their teeth are huge and strong and and then you look at the same population 20 kilometers away and they're completely different looking specimens. So it's just like, wow, diet is such a big deal for these people. And when I go over there, I feel fantastic, you know, canoeing around in the water and enjoying the food and you, f you feel so much more vital and alive and thriving. So that's why we love it there. But um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting learning experience as well. Um, okay, so... With the um, the online platform that you've 
yeah. developed. The, I think the initial, in, in, you know, the initial, initial drive of it, if you like, um, was to get this message across in a simple and yeah. understandable manner. And um, yeah, because I I do four or five thousand word blog posts that go here's my proof text for my concept on the food insulin index or the uh, the, the, the nutrient density or satiety and. But not everybody wants to read that. People just need to know what to do. So we've tried really hard to develop a tool that will just say, well, here you go. Mm. Here's what you should do today and help people develop habits to actually do that every day. And I think somewhere on on Messenger, I've got the initial ramblings of that from when before you even started, Probably. potentially, that we were chatting and you were saying, look, I'm thinking about doing this and that. And what do you think about all this stuff that it can include? And I think... I think I was quite vocal in saying, mate, it's just way too much confusion going on. <laughs> it needs to be. But, you know, fast forward an, a year and a half and you've really simplified a lot of it and made it um, almost a game, right, that you play every yeah. day. And yeah, I think yeah, that's what the hook was. And and Alex, who's your uh, developer, um, yeah. was it, it, fortunately is very into his nutrition as well, right? He's very f- keen on the whole you know, what it does and, and the outcome of it, as opposed to just being yeah. a, a developer who just looks at ones and zeros. Yeah, Alex has got a degree in, in neuroscience as well okay. um, and was a semi-professional tennis player. So he's got an understanding of not just programming, but, you know, what it takes to make something addictive in a good way and develop positive habits. So that's what we've tried to jam into the tool is not just, you know, eat this and this is how much which is part of it but here's the habits we've got 280 different habits that you tick off each day only four or so at once that you want to actually tackle but that process of going yes i did that today and tomorrow i'll do that again and then gamifying it so you're competing with your friends to get better nutrient density scores and and you know yes i i did more habits and more positive things and uh, we're hoping it'll be sticky and addictive and really have it for me. It has been for me. It's been really fun to beta test it over the last six months, nine months, and um, it's really helped me. So um, yeah, I'm hoping it'll really help a lot of people out there. And it's, we're just in the second round of beta testing after people like yourself said, oh, I get into it. I don't know what to do with it. Um, it's, there's a lot of information there. Do I have to track my calories? Do I, what do I do with it? But we've tried to get it to the point where once you log in, it'll say, do this, now do this and do this. And then if you want to dive into the other detail, it's all there if you wanted to play a little bit more. The, but also some of it is really simple. It's like try a new food today. Yeah. And, yeah. You'll get and that's what we start off with. We say, you know, we've, we've got a list of optimal foods for your goals and then we can tweak them and dial them up for your current nutrient deficiencies based on your chronometer data. But First thing is like try a new food, try a new meal. Here's a, here's a list, and then you get into the habit of doing that. It's that building the habit, and then it's you know one of mine is uh, you know no liquid calories today or steak and eggs, which we were talking about earlier for you. Just eat a meal, meal steak and eggs, and you know how does that feel? Does it work for you? Reflect on it, get more sleep, and 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 we've we've dialed it for all different goals. Whether you're trying to build muscle mass or manage diabetes or get therapeutic ketones. And I think initially we'll probably focus on that. I want to lose weight and I want to manage my diabetes aspect, but it's got, you know, we've, there's so many goals out there and they're all different and you need a different approach for different goals for different situations. And some people, you know, maybe they want to, I don't want to be Louis Villasenor and look completely ripped and shredded and, up their protein and work out every day and, and dial down their calories and they just want a nutritional ketosis approach that's, that's comfortable and we can we can dial it in and you can just you know sit there but if you do want to push it to that you know I want to get ripped and I want to maximize my weight loss and I want to do a protein spring modified fast without compromising my nutrient density which is where that all falls apart um, we can dial it in for you too so yeah it's it's a really exciting tool and uh, hoping it'll it's like nothing else out there, so hopefully it'll blow people away. Mm. Uh, and the the overall image you get from it is one that almost draws you in and says, "Look, it, it, 
just all the information you need is here. Yeah. Just take your time a little bit and do yeah, a little yeah. bit each day and you'll get it. It's not like here's here's the the clickbait and then here's the answer. Right? It doesn't it, Yeah, yeah. And and unfortunately, you know, that's why I work with clients six months or twelve months. To, to change things because you need a lot of exposure to someone to make those lasting changes, right? You can't yeah. just turn around and say, because if you could, you know, Rob Wolf's book, The Paleo Solution, would have changed everyone's life and that'd be it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, he and, wouldn't and, have needed to bring knowing, out another one. <laughs> you know, he'd have been fine. So yeah, you and I know that just having a lot of knowledge and there's a lot of experts out there have a lot of knowledge that's trouble to put it into practice and it's that habit forming you know, I'm going to change a little bit and it becomes part of me, part of my identity and I change a little bit more and I add a new habit and I keep on improving and and I bring my family with me and I bring my community with me and I, I backslide a little bit and I get mm. back on and keep going. It's, it's a continual process. And then, you know, what do you do when you're at maintenance and how do you optimize your nutrition for long-term maintenance? And then if you start to backslide then it'll say well let's switch gears again and go back and focus on weight loss but um yeah it's it's pretty cool do you know what it's interesting you say about when you fall off you know you backslide and, and then you have to start again i find that those episodes are kind of where people really learn the most because mm. they followed something they believed was the correct thing to do and i, and I say they i'll include myself in that right so you know, I still mess around with my food all the time. Um, let's try this, let's try that. Is that going to make me feel better? Yeah. Am I going to feel more satiated? Am I going to sleep better if I do that? Am I, you know, and yeah. you're always tinkering with it, right? I don't think that'll ever change. But, you know, what what I might have believed five, six, ten years ago, I certainly am not going to have the same opinion of now, necessarily, mm. across the board. Mm. But if I fall off a a plan if you like and, and find as though what I was doing was more difficult than I thought it was going to be or I just found I couldn't stick to it if I reflect on it I then start to realise things that maybe I wasn't aware of beforehand mm. and then I mm. maybe look up some research on it or I, or I speak to you or I speak yeah. to whoever and they go oh yeah we'll try this blah 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 and they go oh yeah of course, that makes sense and all of a sudden you've had a, you know, a bit more knowledge but also a bit of a more understanding of perspective of why you're falling off this yeah. plan and all the rest of it right so in the in the platform and i don't know if this does it uh yet but i'm sure there'll be something there is yep. there something specific about that it, like you mentioned there that if you do fall off you go right okay let's refocus on weight loss again and start again kind of stuff but does it look at any of the psychology yeah definitely in the psychology and in educating yourself and it looks at each what Alex has worked on over the last few months is developing that entry. When you log on each day, you say, hey, how are you doing? Were you hungry? Were you craving? How is your energy levels? Uh, and then that gives you guidance based on your responses to that. If your weight is creeping up, like say you said, I just want to maintain, but your weight starts creeping up, then it triggers you back into it. But um, we're also developing a, a, a diet break mode, which I think is really helpful mm. as well, that – um, Lyle McDonald talks about it as well, and I think a lot of the people that are successful in the long term, um, dieting is difficult, and it, it takes intest like, like um, intestinal fortitude or just a, a mental effort that you get tired and your body goes, okay, I need some food, and sometimes it's okay to relax for a week or two and then go, okay, I'm ready to go again. Um, I think that can be useful just to sometimes after especially if you're working out or dieting really hard your body just needs to to chill back and practice maintenance for a little while and then you jump back in again so that's that's part of the process as well do you do you think um i mean a lot of people look at daily calorie intake and you know is it in a deficit is it in a surplus whatever it is and they kind of work around that um mm. i also find that when we try and view it over a week mm. we can get a bit more flexibility into things mm. so there are certain mm. days where we know people are going to be more busy than others mm. and therefore they they kind of aren't so focused on food well i'm yeah. just really busy i've got this to do that to do blah blah blah. i might intermittent fast on those days say because yeah, yeah, i know totally. the morning's gonna be this or whatever it is and then 
you get a kind of a bigger deficit through there. And then maybe on a yeah. Friday night or a Saturday night or a weekend yeah. in general, they, they yeah. always overeat because, well, I want to go out with the family for breakfast or then I want to do this or whatever. I don't know. But if yeah, you totally. if, if view it over the week rather than the days, we kind of mm. get a bit more compliance to it. I don't, do you ever look at that? Yeah, uh, we, we were trying to get data to to look at that in a little bit more detail to see when people tend to lose the weight. Um, but yeah, I know personally on the weekend you'd eat with the family and so sort of celebrate food and you, you've got fresh food because you've been to the markets and you cook something yummy and you all enjoy it as a family. And But then during the week you can be much, I tend to be much more utilitarian with my food and you prioritise your morning protein and, and ideally, you know, I come home at seven o'clock on the bus and the family's probably already had dinner because they eat early and ideally I don't want to be chowing into the fridge by myself looking at those yummy things and if, if I can eat enough protein at work then I tend to not be hungry at night and yeah, so there's definitely a, a weekly cycle mm. to that. It's interesting. So can we um, ruin our show once again and look at this... Uh, <laughs> Visually. Should we give it a crack? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? You're, you're very brave, Paul. Thank you. Cutting edge, um, mate. Cutting forefront, edge. Forefront. Of, bleeding uh, edge. Soon all radio so shows will that? do this. <laughs> so you can see that? I can, right. Yeah, so this is... Yeah, so, so you set up your little avatar and you choose for me at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm fat loss boss and there's a you know keto module and a blood sugar module and a therapeutic keto module and a maintenance and each person's got sort of an avatar so you identify with that and like so many people get so excited about you know uh, their, 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 their avatar um what are they the all those fads that used to go around where everybody would pokemon go and uh, you, you're trying to make this thing live and if you can just go you know, here's an avatar that you're trying to look after i think people tend to invest in mm that little pet avatar that's virtual, but, you know, in investing in that, they end up having benefits in their own body. Um, at, at the moment, we've got this milestone sort of arrangement going where it says, you know, you're going to get to this milestone and then this milestone and then this milestone and continue down the track. And it takes you through that milestone process and says, this is where you're going to get in the long term. Um, and it takes it into bite-sized chunks. So you get that psychological benefit of going, yeah, I got to the first milestone, I'm doing okay. Um, so we this get is, in here, this you is can like buy a, a, a track which shows um, the, the progress that you're making. Yeah, and, yeah. And each in, time in you terms do something, of, it gives you that sort of motivation to keep going. Yeah, and it's not just, oh, yeah, I've got three months to go. It's like, okay, I reached my first milestone, well done, and it gives you a congratulations. Um and each day you can jump in and you log your weight, but then there's a whole lot of different metrics from weight, body fat, waist, breast ketones, blood ketones, glucose, how you performed athletically, your recovery, your heart rate variability, trigs, HDL, and all those other things. And we actually use those things to dial in your um, different parameters. So if you look at... Uh, the, the coolest one, I think, is the smart macros. So most people just say, here's your macros and here's what you need to eat. But we actually use the, are you losing more muscle mass than body fat? And if you are, then you need to up your protein. If your glucose, if your blood glucose is still too high, then you say, you know, let's dial in your carbohydrate because you're obviously eating too many carbs. So that's not the front line and you know we took your advice that that can be confusing but if you want to dial into it and look under the hood if you want to actually fine tune that we give you that guidance based on how you're actually performing so there's so many debates out there of you know should you eat more carbs or more fat and but it's very individual if, if you're not tolerating carbohydrates if you're beyond your personal fat threshold then you probably do need to dial back your carbohydrates and maybe even your overall calorie intake but um yeah, so we, we tweak your macros based on how you're actually performing in your goal, whether it be fat loss without losing muscle or glucose control, diabetes control, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there's a lot of real-time feedback there that you can that can give you some guidance, you know, pretty much on a daily basis as to what's a good uh, way to go. 
Yeah, and, and we reset your target macros every week based on your performance that week towards your goal, and we keep on fine-tuning that. Um, you can see down here there's different habits at the moment. It's, you know, steak and eggs, only whole foods, no liquid calories, try and eat water when hungry, uh, drink water when hungry. Um, and then we've got, if you look at uh, optimal, got a bunch of optimal recipes that you can eat. That fit your macro kind of split that you're after. Yeah, that, that align with those goals. Uh, there's my to-do list. <laughs> um, and then we can join other challenges. I was just going to show you through that. So there's a whole lot of different challenges. So, so you know the... Um, the sorry, uh, Martin, you know the, um, the parameters that you need to put in, like the height, the weight, the body yep. fat percentage and then it got into quite you know got into some weeds there with like blood ketones yep. blood glucose this, anyway. a lot of people are not going to be doing that on a daily basis no what, no what what's the minimum kind of input that you would want or need so that the user can get some valid data to say okay this is what we think you should do yeah, and that's what we've tried to do I've said for each goal it's like are you trying to manage your blood sugars you need to make track your blood sugars each morning are you trying to lose weight you need to track your weight each morning and we'll make decisions but we're fine based on, based that. on that if you're yeah. trying to lose body fat you you track your weight and your body fat but if you want to track all those other things they're really useful too and but we can actually refine your diet based on your, your ketones and ideally your breath ketones and your heart rate variability and, and those sorts of things. But you don't have to dig down into that, but we can use that information to help refine your choices. Yeah. It's, that's brilliant, mate. It's Honestly, it's it, you can be used as much as someone wants to, but the, the parameters yeah. that you take in, people just want to know what they've got to do. But if they put in that data, they'll know exactly what the next best step is which is interesting yeah exactly so so we can we can say well these are the best things to eat but if we know what you're currently eating we can fine-tune that a little bit more but you don't have to put it that in but hopefully people will get see the value of doing a little bit of tracking yeah um but but it gets oppressive and it gets too much to track all the time so you don't want to be you don't want it to be your total job you just want it to be a reminder each day you 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 wake up or you jump on the bus and you enter your data and you spend five minutes just reflecting. And it's that process of reflecting. How did you do yesterday? How would you go? What did you do well? Like you were saying, where did I fall off the wagon and where do I need to improve today? It's that um, habit building process of continually improving and reflecting that'll, I think, get people there. Yeah. I noticed on a slightly different topic that Chronometer um, now accepts Aura Ring data for the hrv oh really do you see that no um so this week they're 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 taking in your uh heart rate your uh, calorie expenditure i think of some description yep. and your hrv or something um so that might be an interesting one to uh mm. add in mm. at some point um and then you yeah, were going to go through talking some of the, the a little bit sorry you were going to go through the some of the tasks that you were um your particular one was saying that you would want to attempt over the next few weeks or months. Okay, I'll jump back in. Yeah, so if you look at, here's a task. Um, it says eat only unprocessed foods. Um, each day after performing the habit, you put a check mark and it gives you a little tip of what to do. And you say, yeah, I've done that each day. And you've just built that habit. Um, and if you look at, the different habits we've got habits under the main challenges area diet hydration psychology and lifestyle and accountability so building a community around it so there's different aspects and you can take on one from each category at a time so we don't overwhelm you we just start you off and continue you down the path mm -hmm. progressively um, and that's and the thing not everybody wants to have this as their complete job no, but I mean, there are some, some tasks are as easy as tell a friend, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to lose some weight this week. And they go, okay, right, well, let's know how you get on. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing big, but but saying it and putting it out there just yeah. gives you that little bit more accountability to say, well, you know, maybe I'm not going to eat that certain thing yep. that I would normally just 
have and not even recognise I've had it, even though it's yeah. 400 calories every day. Um, so, yeah, it's a really well, simple thing, right? There's, there's snap my food and, and you get points for taking a photo of your food, which gives you a degree of accountability. If you're actually looking at the food, you're taking a photo of your food, maybe you want to share that food with people on the Facebook group, then that helps you be more accountable to what you're doing. And you think about it, you're more conscious about, you know, it's not just mindless eating of everything that's in the fridge that's available at 10 o'clock at night. Do you think um, that, that people want to come to a point where they don't need to think about this stuff anymore. Uh, yes, definitely, and 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 the ideal is like your appetite is, um, your appetite should work the best in the natural environment. Your mm. appetite has developed, and, and we really see this as a training wheels to get you back to not needing this. But it might take you a month or six months, or maybe a year to get get you back to the point where you. You, uh, we're so habituated by our advertising environment, our community environment, because everybody else is eating Oreos and Doritos in front of Netflix for five hours each night. You know, that that's mm. our current habit. And we theoretically know that there's better habits out there, but uh, we, we don't do them. And it, it takes a system to get you to do that. So you see here with the psychology, you've got your, you know, write down your why, um, monitor your habits, elite, eliminate triggers, plan ahead, visualize eating well, um, reflect on the food you ate today. Um, yeah, so yeah, and, and, there's a bunch of – and there's 280 of these for different yeah. goals, and, and it'll, but it won't overwhelm you. It'll just do one at a time, and you can keep on – you go, well, I've, I've lost the weight. I'm going to change to – bodybuilding or I've lost the weight I'm going to change to my diabetes is under control and now I'm going to become a performance athlete and we, we've got it set up for how you're going to be a, a performance athlete mm. I mean you know looking through the tasks it's really simple one of them is yeah. eat eggs for lunch yeah you know, it, it, and that's a great way like you, you take boiled eggs to work and yeah. they're hard to overeat and you're full and satisfied and got plenty of nutrition plenty of protein yeah can I tell you, my um, my lovely other half um, likes her bread and carbs, and and she does very well on them. Thank you very much. Um, I sadly am the opposite, and <laughs> and and I will when the you know if I'm hungry or I've eaten, but I still want to eat something else. I mean, it's very easy to go and have a big you know, a bit of toast or a bowl of, egg, of of oats or something like that, or you know. And I know mm. for me, it's not a great choice. But I do mm. find boiled eggs, <laughs> bizarrely, you're right, a couple of those, it kind of takes the edge off everything yeah. um, on their own. Um, I'm not saying you, you cover them in mayonnaise or or whatever people choose, but if you have them just on their own, it really is something that just takes the edge off things. The only yeah. problem I have is I am so bad at peeling the damn things. <laughs> no, honestly, mate, I, I end up peeling them and I end up with just the yolk. <laughs> like everything else is ruined i can do them when they're well, warm when they're warm out of yeah. the thing but when yeah, they're yeah. cold out the fridge That's it's a, a different ma- and every time i do it i think to myself i've got to go on youtube and find out how to peel a damn boiled egg properly because it's driving me tim, insane i think tim ferris did a video that was massively popular on that i forget how he did it but yeah i think my secret is just do it when they're fresh yeah when they're warm it's great it's easy that takes two seconds but um then you've got to wait the, the like whatever it is five minutes to boil the damn things, and by then you've made the toast. <laughs> There's your problem. <laughs> get, get rid of the toaster because if you've got to grill the bread under the grill, then it will take as long as the, the egg, so you won't be doing it. But um, <clears throat> so where where do you see this being positioned in a marketplace? Do you, do you feel as though? Anyone can use it, or is there? Is it just going to be people that are going to be looking to lose weight? Uh, no, no. There's, um, like we said, there's a if you look at the settings. Uh, you know, I won't take you back in there, but yeah, we've got from people looking to manage therapeutic ketosis, nutritional ketosis, diabetes management, weight loss, weight loss, and blood sugar control. Um, just aggressive, you know, all out proteins bearing modified fast fat loss to optimize your diet for that we're looking at we've got a module for people who are just maintaining 
um, who want to optimize the rest of their lifestyle and maximize the nutrient density. And then for that mass gain bodybuilder or the performance athlete, the endurance athlete who needs to get more nutrition in there, um, with, which is more new, energy dense. So it's sort of optimized the system for all of that and got avatars for different people with those different goals and systematized nutrition to make sure you get enough calories or not too many calories with the nutrients you need depending on all those different mm. range of goals. I think initially we're going to focus on trying to promote it to people who are looking to lose body fat and control their blood sugars just because it's, it's really unique for that to, mm. to help you dial in your insulin load to try and stabilize your blood sugars. And does it cover the satiety that we spoke about, that combination yeah. of foods and things? Yeah, yeah. So, so the food choices are tailored based on you know if you're trying to lose body fat we say well we want foods that are satiating and have nutrients in them at the same time and we can tell you what foods they are um, and if you log your food with chronometer once a week upload that you don't have to do it all the time you just do it occasionally because most people eat the same thing all the time um, you can upload a few days of that and then it'll fine tune that to who you are and what you're currently eating um yeah so it's pretty cool. So, so if you upload chronometer data, it will yep. it will look at it and say, okay, maybe you want to eat less of this and more of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so a lot of people are, uh, you know, it's it's completely different. You know, you could say vegans do this and yeah. carnivores need more of that, but it's unique to those populations as well. Each person, based on whether they're eating steak only or uh, getting a lot of organ meats, have different deficiencies. So we just say, what well, what are the top five or ten nutrients you need to focus on and which foods will provide you with more of that. And let's focus on that for a week or two. And then you can upload your data again and we can refine and re-guide that as well. So it'll continually optimize and improve um, your nutrition as you continually add more foods and meals to your list. Mm. So if it did if it did blood testing as well and sleep monitoring, uh, you'd put me out of a job. <laughs> because <laughs> we can work with you paul thanks for that well, welcome to the community <laughs> but um uh yeah we'd have to do a little bit more but um but it's a really <laughs> really good tool because i have to it, shave my head too yeah that's it yeah it is but it is almost like having a coach there that's looking at your diary every week and going okay how are you yeah. looking how are you feeling what's your digestion like what's your focus yep. what's your yep. mood how's your memory how's your sleep all right, well, let's yeah. have a look at what you've been eating. Has the weight gone up? What your measurement's like? Okay, yeah. well, based on all that, I think this could, this is going to be for next week, which is kind of the stuff that we do. Um, but yeah. obviously, we do a lot more in-depth with the blood testing and organic acids and all that shit. But yeah, yeah, the yeah. fact is, more people need what you're doing because they want it that simple yeah. stuff and they don't need the, the in-depth stuff that we kind of do as a clinic. So with, yeah. with this, I think, I, you know, I just... And I've been saying it for so long. I cannot wait for this to come online because it is just a phenomenal product that yeah, people are going to find you. really useful. I mean, I so. it, it, initially, um, it was it was very clunky and it was very uh, overwhelming in in a way. Yeah. Not this not this new version, the, the very very first thing that you were doing. Yeah. But you've yeah, really, yeah. you and Alex have really refined it well. So hat off to you, man. It's. Mm. Uh, it's a brilliant I mean, thing that's going to help a lot of people. And, and on the, I don't think everybody can pick it up. Um, we've designed it to try and be so everybody can pick it up and just know what to do intuitively. But there's also a, a pro version that people like yourself who are already working with a personal trainer or a nutritionist or a doctor or a clinic of some sort, um, they can have a, a professional membership that can then view their the client's data, so have a window in there and just have that more personal touch as well and more personal guidance. So you don't have to tell them everything, but mm. where you see them going off track, you can guide them. And if you're already working with them, you can use this as a tool to monitor them and and, and help them through it. So th I think that's really exciting as well to have a really interesting yeah. the, the, the pro platform that will uh, help people help the people using the platform. Interesting, and and clearly as a as a a founding supporter, I would get it at a heavily <laughs> discounted rate for, for the pro platform. Um, so people can start using this now or not? 
Is it ready or not? Uh, we, we've, we've got a free report. Um, I keep hassling Alex and he keeps says, just, you know, I need to keep getting it right. And that's a good thing because we don't want to put it out to the yeah. world before it's, you know, just really nice. Um, we've done one round of beta testing and we're just about to jump into the second one, which will probably run for a few weeks. Um, I think the hope is basically to be able to release it to the world before Christmas and then come January a lot more people can get on board but to we've got a free report which is really quite comprehensive already so if you jump on the free report you can get you know your macros and your foods and your your meals and just sort of get a, a taste for how it works and then we'll send you a, a follow-up email once it's ready to jump on board fully and, and have a play and you also have an app um that you can basically take around the supermarket um and I'm looking for it on my phone, and I changed my phone this week, and I, load, I lost a load of data, all my fault, didn't back up stuff as I should have, and that is one of the apps that has gone missing. I'll have to re-download it. I can't remember what it was called, but basically you could look up the most satiating foods. Yeah. Is that right? Um, yeah, we did a, the, the Never Hungry Diet app, which then takes you through. Um, you can dial up, hey, this is the food I'm about to buy, what's the nutrient score, what's the satiety score, what's the food insulin index score, will that work for my current goals? Hmm. Which, again, is free. You can just download that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a free tool. So we've, we've tried to design a whole lot of free tools that people can check out and play with. Yeah. So, Well, mate, um, as soon as it's ready, I think a lot of people are going to jump on that. But in the meanwhile, <laughs> we will put the link to where they can get the uh, the free the free uh, stuff in um, yeah. uh, in the show notes, and then they can just I think in there they just put their email address in anyway, right? So when it's yeah. ready, you just ping them an email and just say, "Look, it's ready to go. Have a check it out." But do you think it's going to be yep. much longer? Yeah. Uh, no, it'll uh, like I said before Christmas, early New Year, we'll have it ready to roll out, and people can jump on board. And looking forward to seeing people compete and vie for the top of the leaderboard yeah, and God. work together on it. Leaderboards, they are such a motivator. <laughs> You'll have more competition, for, mate. Leaderboards are such a motivator for people, um, and they really <laughs> do make they do they they, they, they really want to do stuff like that. I mean, I think I told you last time we were speaking on here. I can't remember if it was then, but basically at a um, client who's a crossfit athlete he's a regional crossfit athlete as, as it happens and um <clears throat> i was speaking to her about the um the old nutrient optimizer leaderboard which i was at the top of for a very long time i let me know but uh, and i am now not at the top of but um uh, and so so she was playing about with it and i said yeah if you look, look here's a leaderboard and she just turned around and said there's a leaderboard <laughs> and as soon as she realised there was a competition involved, she, it was a different thing to her. Then she was really trying to um, pull things How do up I get and to the do top? It. Yeah, we don't need to show that now. So for people listening, yeah. he's showing the, the leaderboard yeah. of which he's the top, which I get. You're, and you're that's down at number eight now, mate. Sorry eighth. about that. And um, yeah. it's very upsetting. Um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll must do better. But the um, but the fact that there are leaderboards involved in things it really does make people. Um, want to try and do mm. better and you don't have to be the top of it you know but if you're just better than the next person or you can see a couple of things you can change that pushes you up five or six places that it just gets people to do things mm. so um it's just another way yeah, of totally that's the idea yeah anyway mate listen um i'm just looking at the clock now over an hour already and <laughs> and we we can always chat for hours but Really, really pleased to see it coming to life. And um, being as I've yeah. kind of been involved for for a long time with the thank you for your support, giving giving some feedback on it. And it's it's so exciting to see it actually mm. materialise. A lot of people talk about this stuff. You know, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and it doesn't come up. And um, you know, you you brought it to life. So well done, you. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of lot of work, and Alex yeah. has put in a massive effort. And yeah, I, every morning I'm motivated to get up insanely early and start writing a blog post or a food list or refining something or and this has all been going on behind the scenes so oh you know i'm so buzzed to see this nearly ready to get out to the world and we are all going to appreciate it i'm definitely sure because uh, it's going to change a lot of people's lives um when people want to get hold of it or they want to get the free stuff just nutrientoptimizer.com is that where they go yeah that's it 
that's it. So yeah, there's a free report. Check it out. You get a feel for it. You can see the full report, which is a more detailed thing that you've done. And uh, yeah, then the platform will just be that little hand-holding guiding thing with challenges and leaderboards and a million tools. But the simplicity to just do every day. And, and do people have to fill out chronometer for it? No, 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 no. That, that's just an optional extra. So we've tried to make as many things as we can just optionals that if you want to add in that extra data, you can. But if you want to tr- keep it as simple as you can, then it, it can be simple as, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, mate. Well, listen, um, thank you for getting up early-ish for me. Um, <laughs> Thanks for staying up late. That's all right, mate. But it's Saturday there now, right? It is. It yeah, is. so you've got no work to do, which is great. No. Well, well, you haven't got to go to work. Um, so I'm going to say, mate, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you. Um, Thank you, always, Paul. Always a pleasure. Love your stuff like so many people do. If you have not checked out Marty before, and this is the first time you've ever heard of him, then please, please, please go and look at his website. Join his Facebook group. Um, he tends to let anyone in, which is uh, <laughs> which is always a benefit because that allows me to go in there. Um, and uh, just just follow some of his stuff because... You know, there are people in the world that even experienced people like myself look up to and we learn from, and Marty is definitely mm. one of them. So, well, thank you. Um, it's great to have people like that and the resources that you provide us. So, mm. um, if you haven't checked him out, check him out. Um, and until next time that we uh, have some sort of weird text conversation at some crazy hour of the night, um, <laughs> enjoy your Saturday, mate. And um, thanks, buddy. We will we will catch up soon. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. All right. All the best. Bye.